All right, you maggots, listen up. Uh, this video is about measuring the Q of a coil. Now, I'm going to get right into it. What did I use to measure the Q of a coil? These units, some of them, measure inductance. These are those cheap units you get on eBay. This one I had a reprogram. Became a, it came with a program that almost did nothing. Then I had read up on it, and I figured out how to put the newer program into it. So the ones that are out there now probably have the new program in it. Make sure they can measure inductance. And when it measures the inductance, it also has a little paragraph or a little sentence down here. It says Q equals. So that's it, Q. You want to measure Q. And that Q equals uh, quality of the coil. Now I'm going to explain that. Uh, the reason I did this video backwards is I don't want to string you along to finally tell you this measures Q. A lot of you guys uh, understand what Q is, and you were just trying to find a way to measure it. So you could do some of your experiments. These measure Q. All right, let's go on with explaining a little bit about Q. Now, as far as I know, it, with my learning curve, there's two places that Q is very important. One of them is on transmitter coils, on the outputs. You want a low Q coil because if it's got high Q, uh, it acts as a resistor and you lose wattage or output in the coil itself. The coil actually gets, it heats up. All right, that's one case. Now, as far as where's the other important place where Q is important would be uh, crystal radios. If you notice the guys that have DXed all 50 states use basket wo woven coils with Litz wire. And that's because that coil is large, it's got Litz wire, and it's woven in such a way it has very little uh, stray capacitance. So that large coil with Litz wire, basket woven, has the most Q that you could have for, that, for a coil. And it's because it's large, again, it's woven, uh, it uses Litz wire and it's basket weave. All right, so anyway, so you got transmitters, you need a high Q coil, and if you want to get into crystal radios, you got to have high Q. Now, I told you about the uh, that crystal radio circuit. That's the one you start with. Here's the actual coil from it. It's 156 microhenries, and uh, the Q is 7.5. And then this coil here is basically the same thing. We'll work with that same crystal circuit. And this has a, uh, a Q of 6. So I'm going to explain some of this stuff to you. See, when the coil is large, it's more likely to have a better Q. But as time went on, radios got smaller, and they wanted to make them cheaper. Q wasn't as important because of uh, transistors had more amplification, or they could add another coil in the circuit to make up for the low Q of the one coil with the amplification. And it's all about money and cost. Now, this this coil here is basically this coil, and it's even smaller, but it's 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 wave wound. So it's got a Q of, say, 5. So it's very small. It's smaller than this one, but it doesn't have the, the, the good Q of the big coil. But it's smaller. And with some transistors in the circuit, you'll never know the difference. All right? Same with this one. This one here has a higher Q. It's wave wound, uh, smaller. Uh, there's, no, there's no core. So that's what you got to remember. Some of these coils, they have a ferrite core. And the ferrite core allows it to be smaller. You lose a little bit of Q versus one of these air wound ones, but it's smaller. See, look at the difference in size. And then this thing here, uh, this loop stick, instead of all the coils, all of the coil being wound down on one end, it's wound across the entire length. So this unit it, it's large to start off with and the co the wires they wound the turns uh, apart from each other about uh, 
32nd of an inch apart, maybe 164th. This has higher Q than regular uh, ferrite rods uh, for antennas. But it's all a matter of what exactly you're trying to do. Are you just building a radio, an AM radio? Uh, not, not, not a big deal. You got your transistors. You have your ICs amplifying, and they they hide some of the fact that the Q isn't there. Um, if you want to have a good DX radio, I explain some of what it has to have. So no matter what kind of coils you use, if you don't have an RF front end on the radio, uh, it's not going to DX well. It's not going to have the the signal's not going to be in the radio to start with, and that's what you have to understand. High Q coils. For crystal radio, they're going to be large, basket woven, um, lits wire, very thick lits wire, and that's what you're going to have to have if you want to DX all 50 states. Oh, and you're going to have to have a 250 foot long antenna. So, like I said, in in two instances, when you're, you got it, you build a transmitter and your final output a coil. Uh, there's a ratio uh, of the diameter to the length. And you got to get all that right. You got to have good uh, copper wire in there. Uh, you may use lits depending on the frequency. But in other words, when you have a transmitter, you want the Q of the coil to be low so it's more efficient. The signal goes from the transmitter out into the antenna and out into the air or through the air, however you want to put it. Uh, and, and then with the crystal radios. Okay, so that's the, the only time you got to be concerned with Q is transmitter. And crystal radios. See, there's a lot of bullshit out there, and that's what it is. It's bullshit. And uh, when I went looking, I found page after page of the formula. And one guy does the, he does a, uh, a article, and then you got the copycats, just like the videos. I'll do a, a really obscure thing, and I find the copies. But the copycats have no followers. I have a thousand followers, and it doesn't make me any money because nobody watches my video all the way through. In other words. Uh, that's why I, I always get right to the point because I know there's people, well, as you measure the Q. And then some people are actually going to miss this. They'll actually leave me a message and say, how did you measure the Q? <laughs> it's so funny. Because you know, they don't watch the video. They see what they're looking for, and they immediately hit the comment section. And Shango has, used to mention this, that people would start telling him what's wrong with the radio without watching the video. It's pretty funny stuff, but it is what it is. But a, a little a little coil like this, this is a hundred um, like micro Henry, and it's close to this one. But because it's smaller and the wires uh, um, a thinner diameter, it has less Q. It's about four. Uh, I actually this one's twelve, but it's only a hundred. This is a hundred and fifty. As you as you go uh, de uh, more. Uh, inductance you have more wire and the Q goes down that's all you got to realize it's it's resistance it's either resistance uh, uh, from the fact of its resonance isn't right but it, it all comes down to like a type of resistance and the coil is not efficient for that circuit it'll work in a lot of cases it'll work you know I don't want to get into SDR radios what pieces of shit they are I just I just uh, someone just recommended a video to me and you got this smiling guy and his SDR radio. They're crap. Uh, I think I've upset enough people. But I just want to tell you, some of these can measure Q. Uh, instead of going off on a tangent, because uh, you got the guys that shoot from the hip. They seem to own the uh, Euler Packard uh, old tube. Um, it measures Q. It's a unit, and that's what it's for. And that was back in the old days when you're designing. See, when you're designing stuff, uh, you got to know your cues for your transmitters and stuff like that. So that's what you get. But this will give you a number. And whether it's real accurate or not, I don't know. I don't have a, a golden idol coil that I know exactly uh, the inductance and the cue. So I can check this out to see how accurate it is. But in other words, it gives you not a ballpark figure. And then I went pondering my coils. And then I ran each coil through this. And I started realizing that you want low Q, the coil's got to be big. And it makes sense. Go look at the crystal radios. And then go read up on the transmitters, What they, the way the coils, uh, the ratio of diameter to length. It's, it's all there. It all makes sense without the formula. 
And when you go reading on Q, which means quality, uh, it's very confusing because a lot of the people that write the articles, they want it to be very, um, they, want to, they want to act like they're really smart. They don't want to put it in layman's terms. So a person can actually understand it. And once you understand the theory, then you can go jump into the math. If you have a, a, a case where you have to design something, which is very rare nowadays. But I just, I, like I told you, when I see something that I don't know, and then I read up on it, and I just happen to measure one of these, and I notice this thing reads Q. And I almost went off on a tangent and built a Q meter. Right. This is this is why why this this happened. And you, uh, if you're into Q, and you're worried about it or thinking about it, and wonder what it was. This video was I did just for you. All right. I think that's it. All right. That's it.